interesting thing in science is, is what happens at the boundary between the known and the unknown. The reason I got into petrology, you can, you can use it to tell, to tell a story, I guess. <laughs> what rocks can tell you about all kinds of earth system processes. When you look at beauty in science, many people would, would tell you that it's the uh, theory of relativity of Einstein. I mean, that equation is just uh, pure beauty. For me, plate tectonics uh, is uh, at the same level of beauty. I mean, it's a very elegant, uh, simple way to explain uh, how our, our planet works. So the, before the plate tectonics, is a, each geological event of the earthquake or the volcano or the mountain building is a, very difficult to explain. But now we can understand of the whole earth system. And that uh, plate tectonics is uh, very unique within the solar system. There is no other planet. It's only the earth. This expedition, we're offshore Costa Rica on the, uh, on the Pacific side. We have two plates and uh, they're converging or coming together and then one plate, because of its density, uh, is diving or subducting uh, beneath another plate. And then at that point of contact between the two plates, you can get very large earthquakes. It seems that most earthquakes that generate big tsunamis happen in these kind of margins, margins like the one that we're studying now. The Joy This Resolution is a research drill ship. It has been used by the Integrated Ocean Drilling Program to recover cores of rocks and sediments from below the seafloor in the world's oceans. Core drilling is the only way to get to some of these sediments. If you think of it, a hole into a sequence of sediments like this is a trip back in time at a particular location, of course. And if you move far enough away, the trip back in time would be different. You have different sediments which can cast light on different aspects of, of the Earth's history. The advantage when you go to the sea, to the marine areas, but there's no, normally there's no erosion, there's no vegetation. Everything is probably sedimented, so you can have a record going back to millions of years. The core samples we're getting um, are being looked at by different types of scientists. In general, we have a group of sedimentologists, a group of petrologists, we have a group of uh, micropaleontologists, a group of structural geologists, geochemistry, physical properties, paleomagnetics, and logging scientists. We have a number of, of uh, different objectives. We're drilling a a whole seaward of the subduction zone to look at the undeformed state of the sediments on the oceanic crust. We're drilling up here on the margin to understand how this margin has moved up and, and down in time. This is an erosive convergent margin, meaning that as the plate is subducting, it's eroding the material from the upper plate at its base, and this upper plate is, is moving down and, and, and back. We want to understand that process. We're drilling a hole near the toe of the margin that will intersect uh, this earthquake fault right here to actually get the fault rocks. And this expedition is part of a larger uh, series of planned expeditions to ultimately uh, drill a deep hole in the area before we see the onset or the earthquakes turning on 
and then through the area where the earthquakes are actually being generated. And in this way, we can compare fault rocks that are not yet uh, generating earthquakes to those that are. The project is international. So actually, this exhibition, people said on the shape from 10 different countries. We were looking at the same data. I find something exciting. I go and ask to maybe a sedimentologist. They need some information from us. We, we collaborate at a very, very intense level. Not only do it across disciplines, we do it across nationalities. Top class scientists from all over the world sitting and working and discuss during the expedition for two months. Well, in addition to just doing the work of running the samples, you're also talking to people in other disciplines and, you know, from around the world that you wouldn't normally be interacting with at home in your lab. We collect a, a large amount of data. These data are eventually made fully public and accessible to, this, to the worldwide scientific community. Five years from now, there may be a great hypothesis to test that we now cannot even imagine that can be tested using the data that we collect. In Tohoku earthquake, it's very different from the regular earthquake. In the very, it's shaking with a very long time. It means that rupture propagated to the very large areas. In historically, the Tohoku area has a smaller earthquakes. So if people know that such a long time shaking means a very large area failure, so people can think it's a very different from the regular type. It's giant tsunami will come. We were not going to predict earthquakes. But just recently, in Costa Rica, where I come from, there was a 7.6 magnitude earthquake. And thanks to the efforts of geologists and people working in that area that have been describing this, they have been explaining to the people, you're likely to have an earthquake in the next 50 years, right? Earthquakes here happen every 50 years. We haven't had one in 50 years. It might come. Uh, that led to strengthening the structures, you know, the tsunami system. Now people are very grateful. The top of Mount Everest is actually made of limestone, and limestone is deposited underwater. So the rocks that are now the highest in the world um, were formed underneath sea level or beneath sea level. So trying to figure out why and how those rocks got from where they were deposited to where they are now on top of the world is what tectonics is. I think a lot of, of the richness of life comes at learning how to, how to look at the world around, around us, whether it's people or culture or, or the rocks. Actually, geology, geology is everywhere, every day.